Okay, we are going to look at using the appropriate existence and uniqueness theorem to decide what we can conclude about solutions to this initial value problem. So we have a third order. This is the highest order derivative is a third derivative. We have a second derivative and a first derivative here. Third order linear differential equation. Remember that you're paying attention to what's being applied to the dependent variable. The only thing applied to the dependent variable in every term in this differential equation is differentiation and multiplying by a function of the independent variable, x. Third order, linear, non-homogeneous differential equation. When it's written in this form with all of the dependent variables on one side, you do not have the zero function on the right-hand side here. So non-homogeneous differential equation. And because we have a third order differential equation, in order to use existence and uniqueness theorem, we need three initial values, all given at the same x value. So we have that here. So we can use the existence and uniqueness theorem for higher order linear differential equations. Uh, the general statement of that theorem does require that we put the differential equation in the correct form. And this is a place where sometimes students mess up a little bit, is they forget that part about that the differential equation needs to be in the correct form. And so essentially, I've got mostly the correct form here, but I need the coefficient of the highest order derivative term to be 1. So I'm going to have to divide through by the natural logarithm of x here to put it in the appropriate form for using that theorem. All right, so I'll just rewrite this differential equation with that done. So. My first term is just going to have a coefficient of 1 times the highest order derivative plus x over ln x times, I'm just going to write y double prime here, uh, and then e to the x over ln x times y prime. Uh, you might notice that we're missing a y term here. I'm going to go ahead and fill in a 0 y. You don't necessarily need to do that. but you should note, notice that the standard form is decreasing order of derivative to the zeroth order derivative. So it's a zero function times y equals, and then don't forget to divide this function on the right-hand side. Also, oops, not sine of x, secant of x over ln of x. Okay, so we want to think about uh, this differential equation. This is the form that we need it in in order to think about existence and uniqueness theorem. All right, so that theorem tells us that we need to pay attention to where all of the coefficient functions, so our textbook uses p1, p2, and p3 of x, but whatever you call them, these coefficient functions, and then f of x, our textbook uses little f of x for the function on the right-hand side here. So I need to think about where all of these functions are continuous. So instead of writing those all out here, I'm just gonna kind of write down below here where is this function continuous? So this function is continuous. Uh, there are a couple things I need to be careful about here. The logarithm function, first of all, is only defined for x greater than 0. The logarithm function. And then I need to think a little bit about, because I have a fraction, is the denominator of that fraction ever 0? And if so, I need to exclude any x values that would make that happen. So maybe you think for a minute about the ln of what is equal to 0. You can do a little bit of algebra here and think about natural log of x is equal to 0. Is that ever equal to 0? You can exponentiate both sides to remove the ln. So you have e to the ln of x, or just x, equal to e to the 0, 1. That does happen when x is equal to 1. So I need to exclude this also. All right, so this function here is continuous when x is greater than 0 and not equal to 1. So this function here is continuous on the interval 0 to 1, not including 1, or the interval 1 to infinity. All right, for the next coefficient function, uh, again, in this one, the only issue is that denominator that might be zero. So you're kind of going back to calculus one or maybe even pre-calculus ideas about thinking about where these functions are continuous and thinking about essentially restrictions on domain is where for, for many functions where you have to um, think about problems with continuity. 
So the exponential function doesn't have any issues, the logarithm function does, and the fact that it's a denominator, also continuous on that same interval. So I'll just put that arrow over here as well. This coefficient function is the zero function. This is really P3 of x, if you want to use the notation in our textbooks. That's the zero function. So use that triple equal sign here to indicate that's identically zero or always zero for all values of x. That function's continuous everywhere. Negative infinity to infinity. And then the lowercase f of x function, do that in a different color here, just since it's on the other side of the equation. Uh, so this secant of x, I kind of messed that up a little bit when I was writing there, but secant of x times ln of x, maybe you want to rewrite that a little bit. Think about that secant in terms of sines and cosines. Secant is 1 over cosine, so maybe you want to think about this right-hand side as 1 over cosine of x times ln of x. Just perhaps making it a little bit easier to think about where this one might have some issues with continuity. Okay, so this function here, this is our lowercase f of x function, uh, is going to have the same restrictions for the logarithm function that these other functions did. Uh, so we need x to be greater than 0 and x to not be 1. x has to be greater than 0 for the logarithm, x not equal to 1 because that would make the denominator 0. And then there are lots of other values of x that I'm going to have to exclude where the cosine function is 0. So thinking back to unit circle or cosine waves or however you think about that, the cosine function is 0 at every odd multiple of pi over 2. So x cannot equal pi over 2 plus k pi is one way to write that, where k is an integer. Um, just thinking about the odd multiples of pi over 2, or you could just list them out, plus or minus 1 pi over 2, plus or minus 3 pi over 2, etc. All right, so probably easiest to think about interval notation here. So I'm going to start by thinking about this interval, x greater than 0, x not equal to 1, and then I'm going to think about really just the, the odd multiples of pi over 2 that are greater than 0, since I have this restriction already. So I'm going to have to exclude pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, etc. If I didn't already have the restriction that x was greater than 0, I'd want to put pluses and minuses here. So thinking about intervals, pi over 2 is about 1.5, right? Three, pi is around 3, so pi over 2 is a, a little bigger than 1.5. So thinking about intervals here, I've got the interval 0 to 1 from here, and then 1 to pi over 2, and then pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2, and so on. I'll just put dot, 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 uh, and so on. All right, so these intervals are the intervals where this right-hand side function is continuous. All right, so the existence and uniqueness theorem says that I need to look for an interval where all of the coefficient functions are continuous. All right, so I need to think about intervals where all of the coefficient functions are continuous and the x-coordinate of our initial value, so x equals 3, needs to be in the interior of that open interval. All right, so this function is continuous everywhere, but because the other functions have issues at x equals 0, x equals 1, I can't use this whole interval. I would want to use the more restrictive intervals. And then, because I have all of these restrictions from this right-hand side at these multiples of pi over 2, odd multiples of pi over 2, really, I want to use the most restrictive set of intervals I have here. And so this really is the most restrictive set of intervals, even though these other functions are continuous at some of the points that are not included in here. That theorem says I'm looking for an interval where all these coefficient functions and the right-hand side are continuous. And this point needs to be in the interior. All right, so x equals 3. That's going to be between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. All right, so the interval where we know something from existence and uniqueness theorem is this interval. 3 is between 1.5-ish and 4.5-ish. Right, so this is the interval. The other thing that you need to be able to do is to say what the conclusion is about that interval. All right, so part of it is like going through some 
thinking about domain. Part of it is making sure you have the differential equation in the right form. But then the other part that sometimes students struggle with, especially when you're doing my math lab homework, they often have some fill in the blanks. So they have part of this wording here. So this is sometimes what students struggle with is being able to write the wording themselves correctly. All right, so the appropriate existence union is theorem for higher order linear differential equations tells us that we have a unique solution that is guaranteed to exist on at least this interval. The theorem says that it could exist on some larger interval. It won't for this one because the original differential equation is going to have some trouble at x equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. But in general, that theorem tells you that whatever interval it is you've decided is the interval that that theorem is talking about. A unique solution is guaranteed to exist. So you get both existence and uniqueness on at least whatever interval you've identified from that theorem. All right, so there's some more videos about more existence and uniqueness theorems, so be sure to watch some of those that illustrate some slightly different variations of what you might have to look for.